So, good evening. Uh, I'm Pieter Eigenmans from uh, Ardina. Uh, I work for uh, two departments uh, for Ardina, for JTAG, GTAG, and uh, also for JS Roots. Uh, the first one is uh, specialized in Java. This uh, JS Roots is specialized in front end. And I'm going to speak about, wait a moment. The micro front ends, the what, the why, and the how. The table of contents is uh, I start with uh, what is a monolith, then I step over to what are microservices. Uh, then I uh, talk about a front end monolith, step over to micro front ends, that's the main part of course. Uh, integration approaches. How you bundle a uh, micro front ends together and communication between micro front ends. <clears throat> and finally, how to speed up development with micro front ends. Let's start with the monolith. A monolith is, they, they say, it is a ball of mud. So uh, the front end and the back end are tightly coupled, tightly linked together. And you have one database. And it is not ideal, so we stepped over to these layers. We split up our, our, our application up in front-end layer, business layer, and database layer. But when you change something in one of the layers, you have a ripple effect. You have to change, uh, when you change something in the business layer, you have to change sometimes so I, you have to change things, a lot of things in the front end and in a database layer, et cetera, et cetera. So we stepped over to microservices. We split up our application into verticals. So uh, each vertical is responsible for one business domain, you can say. And at the year in this example, we see that we use one database. So this is not what we want uh, because the verticals are then tightly uh, coupled, linked to the database. So we decided that every microservice has its own database. So you have your own verticals, which is responsible for their own business domain and can, uh, yeah, can you can develop it uh, independently from other teams. So microservices uh, are uh, small and uh, our focuses are focused on one thing, it's autonomous. Uh, in uh, 10 years ago, uh, Amazon uh, announced that they have hundreds of microservices running in production. That's great. But a few months later, Netflix came with the announcement that they have more than 500 microservices that handles over 2 billion API requests daily. That's quite good. But they forgot something. They've, uh, they, uh, they saw that their microservices has uses. What I do mean about it, uh, they, they recognize that they have uh, split up their backends into microservices but they still have a front end, which is still a monolith. So that was the thing uh, by Amazon and, Network and uh, Netflix. So they split it up, try to split up their front end, of course. But first I want to recap this uh, little part. Uh, we started with a monolith where uh, the front end and the back end are tightly linked to each other and we have uh, split it up our front end and back end into separate parts and finally we uh, we ended here with microservices with a large front end monolith at the top and that is not what we want so the micro front ends are born we realized that we yeah, have to split our front end into uh, smaller parts like microservices. 
And so the idea is what you see here of micro frontends is to extend the concepts of the microservices to the frontend world. The idea is to split up your frontend into independently uh, loosely coupled uh, coupled uh, applications, micro frontends they call it, and at uh, production time you can bundle it uh, together to one uh, single user facing application. This is what you want. Here I have an example, example application about a micro frontend app where you can uh, you have a search bar uh, that is a micro frontend, and you have also a, uh, a browse. You can browse through restaurants, and every uh, restaurant is of, is of course also a micro frontend. Uh, how do we? Uh, yeah, how, do, how does this page looks like behind it? behind uh, under the hood uh, you have a container application which is uh, which is the main entry point of the application and this uh, container is responsible for the routing and also for cross-cutting concerns like uh, authentication authorization and also it uh, contains two micro frontends a uh, micro frontend search bar and a micro frontend browse reference and here you have also uh, another micro front end which is which uh, responsible for ordering your food so this screen contains one micro front end micro front end order food Now it's the question, how do we slice our application? Or do we slice our yeah, micro front ends? We have one micro front end per page. You can, you can use hyperlinks to link it. When you have multiple micro front ends per page, you, uh, you see uh, as, it here, see here, as it is here, then you have, uh, yeah, you can organize it in verticals. That means that uh, profile is a vertical and uh, catalog is a vertical and ordering also. And a vertical is a responsible, what I already said, for a business domain. And a, a, a vertical consists not only a, a, of front end, but also consists of a, a microservice back end. So everybody thinks about microfront is about only front end, but it is also uh, uh, linked to a uh, yeah, microservice at the back end. And every team, or for example, team profile, is uh, yeah, responsible for uh, one vertical and one business domain and um, yeah, can, uh, can work independently of other teams and you can uh, you have less coordination between uh, other teams. There's less coordination between uh, team profile and team catalog, for example. And every team can decide which uh, language it will use. Uh, profile can use uh, Angular, catalog, view, and ordering uh, React. So that is also possible with micro front ends. integration approaches of micro front end. How do we bundle our micro front ends? When you have one micro front end per page, you can use hyperlink integration, what I already told you. And we have, when you have multiple micro front ends per page, you can, you can uh, integrate it, build it at build time. You can also uh, at service side build it in micro front ends. And you can also uh, you know, do it at runtime. So uh, that means that you uh, bundle it all uh, in the front end, your application. You see uh, another view of it, built-in integration. You see your the, the blue box uh, where you in the build deploy. You see that's uh, there, the built-in integration. And micro front ends are uh, yeah packaged as dependencies and bundled together via a package JSON. 
That is uh, the main thing about build time integration. We use always a package JSON to, to bundle uh, all those micro front ends. And we have a server side integration, which is responsible for composing and rendering HTML on the server. And we have a runtime integration that is uh, yeah, totally done at the front end. We don't use pack at package JSON anymore at runtime integration. I'll show you an example later. Build them integration, let's start with that. Uh, for built up integration, we uh, normally, it is uh, easier to make use of a mono repo. That may, means that you have one repo for all your application, which contains all your micro frontends, for example. And it is loaded uh, locally, totally, you like, can load it uh, locally uh, on your uh, device. And uh, yeah, it is uh, easier to develop when you're using MonoRepo with built-in integration. If all everything in one place, you can also, also test everything because you have loaded everything locally. And you see also here uh, the picture of the package JSON, which is responsible for bundle, bundling all those separate micro front ends to one package. Here you see an example, a very simple example of the packagation of the application I showed you already. The food application uh, consists of uh, three micro front ends and they are here bundled together, together and they are packaged like uh, dependencies uh, with the name browse restaurants and order foods, and a user profile, etc. You can also uh, use uh, the search bar yeah, as a micro front end. And here you, you bundle it together. Advantages of build up integration with the motor monorepo is that you have to, uh, you can easily share common functionality. So you can uh, very easily import, export, export, import your, uh, your uh, library or uh, your component somewhere else in your. Uh, on the repo, uh, there is a lot of uh, yeah. Consistency is also good when you use a mono repo for built-in integration because you have styling in one place, you have the configuration in one place, you have you 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 have configured your uh, your buttons have the same look and feel. So there is a lot of uh, colors are the same because you have loaded all your application in your, in your uh, locally on your device, you can, uh, so there's a lot of consistency in the front end. Uh, you can easily manage changes. You can uh, make a lot of changes um, in, in uh, multiple uh, micro front ends together. And testing the application is also uh, easier because you've loaded all the application locally. The drawback of a uh, bottom integration is we have to uh, recompile and release every single mic frontend in the mono repo in order to release a change. This is a little bit strange. We have we have split it up. We've done our best to split up our uh, micro frontends in independent part, independent parts, and that is okay, of course. But it is uh, yeah time consuming to make a release, and that is a uh, downside of it. Server-side integration uh, for composing and rendering HTML from the server out of uh, multiple templates. Here you see a very simple example about the index HTML, which contains uh, or server-side includes. And here you see uh, the page HTML, and this will be, uh, yeah, Included in this on the server. How do we do that? We use here a NGRA, ng uh, server. It listens on port 88. Here it is running on localhost. And uh, when you go further down, you see here a location there. Here you decide which HTML 
uh, will be uh, inserted into the dollar page uh, variable. So when you, uh, based on the URL, when you, uh, so when it ends with slash browse, then the browse micro front end will be loaded. You see another example about server side integration. You're in the middle, you see a container app application server, which is uh, we which uh, does requests to uh, micro front ends, micro front ends, which is which are running uh, on their own server, and it's uh, yeah, it is the container app is responsible for assembling all those templates and fragments on one page. It's all on the uh, server side. Runtime integration here we bundle our our application in the front end. You see it. Uh, you can do that. Uh, yeah, we love techniques, but globally, we you can you can use iframes for it. There's a very old technique, and web components is the newer one, of course. Uh, drawbacks of runtime integration with iframes. This yeah, difficult to build integrations. It's all technique, and yeah, it's very challenging to make uh, your page fully responsive. So we step over to web components. And you can also use a lot of frameworks uh, for this. But I, uh, for this example, I use plain JavaScript to uh, make a web component. And in this context, a web component is a technique to make a micro front end. And a micro front end is in this context a uh, type of architecture. Here we see an example of, uh, I try to show you, I want to show you an example about how you create this page globally with a micro, with a web component. How do you make this uh, micro front end? And here you see an example. This is a custom uh, web component I created here with uh, the tag name micro front end order food. And it's also, I define here a lot of properties, a lot of, a lot of attributes with the name of the, uh, I pass in curly lights and I pass also, assign here also uh, the image. And uh, also I assign here uh, the menu items. So for simplicity, I only uh, work now with the name and the image. So I go here to the code how to implement this web component. How do we create this web component? First, you have to define a class for it with a proper name, our micro fronted order foods, and we extend here our, uh, your extent here from the HTML element. With HTML element, you can make your own custom web component. Here we call a constructor to insert the year again. We, with the constructor, you can instantiate your uh, web component. And with super commando, and with the super, we uh, call here, uh, yeah, we can make use of all the uh, logic from the HTML element to build a web component. Now we have done this. We can uh, also define here a, a shadow DOM. That is a encapsulated view to show something. And we want to show an image and a, uh, a text in this uh, simple example. So first, with document create elements image, we instantiate a image element and we assign here a, uh, a text. Assign here uh, the, from data name that is from this here data name. This comes here in, in, and I also assign here the data image attribute, the contents of it, and that is uh, that it contains the image, URL to the image. And finally, we append our image 
uh, to the shadow DOM so it can be uh, rendered. And finally, we define our, our uh, custom element they call it also, or we define our web component with the name microphone dash frontend dash order dash food. And this is the same name I use here as my tag name. So I can use it also this, can use this name in my index.html. I show you. I show you now a little thing, a little bit live. Okay. Here you see uh, now, I showed you already a very simple index.html file. And I define here my custom web component, my custom yeah, element they call, so they call it also. And it has uh, three properties, properties. And uh, this I will pass to the, uh, in a script tag, I define here my JavaScript, which, uh, yeah, which uh, uh, where I define, where I construct my web component. You see a little bit the same code. Here you see I extend from HTML element. I use a constructor so you can instantiate this uh, web component we call super. So you can use all those logic from the HTML element. And here I attach a shadow DOM. I do a little bit more here. I create here also, instantiate here a div element and I place some text in it. Oh, the date name is text. And I append the text to the shadow DOM. And also, this is the same I've told you. Here I, uh, is, I uh, create a image element and I attach it here also to the DOM. And let's see. Okay, yeah. Here you see it works. It's not so, uh, there's no rocket science. <laughs> okay, let's go further. Uh, can I touch this bar? Yeah. You see uh, the uh, global application. What are we talking about? You can also uh, select a uh, in search bar uh, uh, the prizes or or a very uh, the cheap ones and the uh, expensive ones. You can we can order the food, but how do we make this application globally? Also in code, I want to show you that. Let's present again. Yeah, this is uh, index. This HTML file, index HTML file, is uh, yeah represents the application I showed you, and it uh, we or we uh, demonstrate uh, runtime integration. So we don't use uh, a, pa a package JSON to bundle our microphone that's together. We only use here this index HTML file to uh, yeah to show and to render our micro front ends and to run the application. How is, how is this built? How is this set up? Here at the top, we, we define our bundles, our micro front ends. In this browser example.com bundle, this, uh, this one contains the, uh, the micro front end browse micro front end. And the order example uh, contains our uh, already made micro front end order food. This is uh, this one. Eh? And in the profile uh, contains the profile uh, micro front end. But uh, I, we want to render uh, one of these micro front ends based on your, the URL you, uh, you type in. This is the place in this placeholder in this div, we will render our micro front end we want to uh, render. I want to show. How do we do that? In the script tag, we define here a uh, lookup table, you can say, with, uh, with the name web component by route. And uh, here you see, based on the URL, we choose the right micro front end. How does this work? Here we, uh, with web component by route, we, uh, based on the URL, which is placed in window location path name, based on the URL, 
we choose here uh, uh, the, the right micro front end. For example, uh, this uh, window location path name contains, for example, uh, slash order food. So, so our uh, our micro front end will be loaded in this uh, variable. And how does this? Uh, how do we make this make this alive? Web component type. We uh, we document create element. We instantiate instantiate our uh, web component type or our or our chosen micro front end, and we append our, my, our web component here to the uh, to the root. What is the root? Root is defined here. That is nothing more than document get element by ID micro front end root. That is defined here. This is our placeholder. So this is the whole story about. A runtime integration. This is how we do that. Uh, nowadays, you have a lot of new techniques for this, of course. Uh, a lot of, uh, but this is, uh, yeah, this is this this will also work. Advantages of runtime integration: you can deploy and test and uh, develop, of course, independently. And you can build integrations between our uh, between your mic micro frontends quite easily. So deep linking history, uh, etc., is, is easier. Which integration and projects projects to use? I'll make here a uh, schema. Uh, the first question is, uh, yeah, micro frontend. When do we uh, start with it? When you say, uh, yeah, when you work with two teams to one pro and on one project or on uh, application, then uh, I should choose uh, not not choose a uh, yeah micro front end uh, architecture. You can go further with your uh, front end model. It I think we have two or three teams. When your application is big enough, then you can uh, yeah you can. Ask yourself: Are our UI domain parts strongly independent? If that is the case, then you can use hyperlinks. When is the when is that not the case? You can ask yourself: Are our server round trips a problem for you? Uh, if it is not a problem for you, you can still use server side integration. It is an old technique, but you can still use it. And um, yeah, when you have problems with server round trips, you can also uh, decide to for uh, yeah for a build time or runtime integration. To bundle, uh, yeah, integration stands for how do you bundle your uh, micro frontends. Mm -hmm. A uh, component library in code, yeah, a uh, com component library stands for, uh, yeah, it's a library which contains your buttons, your footer, your header, all those components you want to uh, reuse. And also color styling, you can also place it in here. And you see here, uh, in time, we have created three micro front ends. And we decided here in this example uh, to uh, that every micro front that has its own component library, its, its own UI component library. So every micro front has its own uh, buttons, styling of buttons, its own styling of the footer and the header, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, its own styling of the input boxes. So you can uh, imagine that we have a problem, can have a problem here with uh, consistency. And so uh, one micro front end should have to uh, use the same buttons, but they can also differ differ from each other. And there is also a problem with, uh, yeah, duplication of code. And every micro front end uses his own UI component library. You can choose for this, but you can also choose for uh, one general UI component library. For for all uh, micro frontends, and then you have uh, a better consistency, of course, uh, of your uh, of your footers and headers and all your stylings. But uh, the downside is that you uh, that your 
micro frontends are then tightly uh, linked to uh, to each other uh, via the uh, UI component library. Uh, when you choose for the uh, one general component UI component library, then we advise I advise you to uh, not to use business logic or domain logic inside the UI component library. A uh, component library, if you really want it, uh, I should build it uh, framework agnostic. Uh, why? Um, now, for example, this, uh, we see this example. Uh, yeah, when you build one microphone that A uh, with, uh, with Vue and B with React and C with Angular, it's better to have, uh, and you want to use one UI component library. It is, of course, easier to have a framework, framework agnostic UI component library, so you can use it for all. Also, when you copy paste it, it is also a good idea to do that. You can uh, framework agnostic, uh, that means that you can use uh, GSX, CSS modules. You can also use Stencil. Okay, now I step over to the communication between micro front ends. Uh, globally, you can uh, you have two uh, type of communications, types of communication. Uh, custom events with a web API you can use. You can also use a shared state. Let's start with a simple one. Uh, imagine that we have uh, here underneath, you see the dispatch event. This is the way you can send an event to uh, yeah, to a uh, to a listener, to uh, to uh, uh, you can also define this dispatch event in one micro front end, and the here you define here our at event listener, which is listening to the same event with the name my event. You can define this one in another micro front end, so they can find each other with this name my event. So you can communicate quite easily in this way. You can also communicate with uh, between microphone and with a shared uh, library, shared state, uh, like Redux, NGRX, you can use. Uh, uh, there are a lot of state management uh, libraries nowadays. And the microphone ends can easily communicate with each other via global state. So you have no local state anymore in this situation. You have global state, but yeah, if uh, you have the same problem as with the database, uh, the micro frontends are you know, linked to each other, tightly coupled, linked to each other for the global state. That's the downside of it. I also would draw here a, a service worker so you can work offline with, with your application. Uh, a little recap about uh, micro front ends microservices. You see, uh, yeah, and then I, uh, you have your uh, three microservices, user order catalog, and each microservice, what I told you, has a database, its own database, and they register each other. They register the, themselves in a service registry, and they can find, find each other with via this very registry. registry. Uh, you have also you can also use uh, for this uh, set up a API gateway, which is responsible for cross cutting concerns, uh, authentication, authorization. It is also responsible for routing, uh, and also for communication with the front end. Uh, you can also uh, yeah aggregate uh, responses via the API gateway. You can use uh, GraphQL in the middle. So the front end can uh, choose uh, by their own which uh, they, they can choose which uh, front end data they want to uh, use on the screens in front end. Let's step over to uh, the development speed. How do can we speed up our development uh, with uh, micro front ends? Told you already already a lot of about it. Uh, in the left side, you see uh, that we. 
yeah, in the past we uh, used uh, we worked with specialized teams, and the teams are grouped around around the skill. And so, one group is uh, specialized in front end, one st one specialized in uh, back end, one specialized in testing, etc. And they are all work separately. But nowadays it's better, of course, to work with cross-functional teams. So you have uh, yeah. A team is grouped around the use case, a uh, business domain, and the team user, team order, and team catalog are also verticals. Eh? So the vertical consists of a front end and a back end, and if all uh, depend, all uh, yeah, they they are, these these teams are cross functional teams, and they can work um, autonomous in the yeah, less coordination between the teams because they can make their, their product on their own. Uh, There's a little recap about how to speed up, uh, better customer focus when you uh, split up everything uh, via ver two verticals. You have a more direct feedback loop for uh, of the customer because you can make things uh, quite fast with the uh, verticals. Cross-functional teams is a good idea. Uh, yeah, you have specialized uh, teams per feature. You can also choose your own frameworks for the front end and the back end. We have uh, we choose for this for cross-functional teams. Uh, uh, yeah, reduce scope. Everything fits into memory, so uh, micro front end uh, and vertical also with the back end is uh, easier to understand, easier to easier to uh, remember also what you're working. For and yeah, and every micro front end has also its own pipeline. That's also a good idea. Here you see three pipelines for uh, three micro front ends A, B, and C, and they all have uh, their own uh, use their own language in the front end in this in this case. And an advantage of uh, for using verticals for front end and back end is, uh, is that you can upgrade uh, yeah, your vertical at your own pace. Uh, so some downsides of micro front ends, uh, the, what I told you already uh, a bit, uh, the payload size can be uh, a problem. Eh? Uh, you can have uh, a lot of duplication of code. Eh? With uh, micro front ends, and uh, because you can copy paste a lot of code, and uh, uh, implementing changes can sometimes be hard because you can, uh, yeah, when you make changes to a lot of micro front ends, uh, yeah, you have also have to coordinate with other teams. Then That's, uh, that is, uh, yeah, a downside of it. We make a lot of changes uh, across multiple front micro front ends mul um, and multiple verticals with microservices. Uh, switching between teams can be a little bit problem right? with the uh, different technologies they use. Testing can be difficult because you have to spin up uh, your whole application uh, to test, uh, yeah, to integrate, to do an integration test. And sharing common functionality, I've told you already about it, about the UI component library. About the sharing, uh, yeah, sharing that functionality can be a problem. A problem in consistency, for example, and also duplication of code. In summary, we uh, I've talked about micro front ends is an architectural approach. I also talk, talked about verticals, which uh, consists of a front end and back end also. And uh, integration approaches, integration techniques, how do you bundle uh, your micro front ends? Uh, I've talked about U UI component library and about cross functional teams to speed up your development. Are there questions? Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, just to to also mention that uh, Pusher is uh, 
helping us to to broadcast this for free to everyone and uh, Alex who is our uh, like permanent more or less permanent and AV guy that he does all the production for us and he's editing the videos for us and on uh, the Pusher uh, uh, channel. So after this, you can watch uh, all the videos that we have as JS Monthly and a lot of other videos on the Pusher website. Uh, we can post uh, on, the, on the chat the, the URL. And Pusher is a, is a company that they, they, they have to do a lot of, they do streaming and a lot of um, uh, stuff with sockets and um, yeah, you should check about Pusher. And okay, I'm going to go back to the, <laughs> to the talk. Um, uh, Peter, thank you very much for, uh, for coming back. Uh, this is the, the second time we have been uh, having you. The first time was in the CTJS um, last yeah. year. Um, a very interesting topic. Uh, we had it uh, also in, our, in a conference with uh, Luca Mezzalira. That he wrote a, a book about it, actually. Okay. Um, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, what the, we have? A, we have one question from Abdul. Um, okay. I'm going to go through. Um, he says, "Let's say that we have a theme file, for example." Um, theme JS with all the colors. How do we allow all the micro front ends to use one file? Allow one microphone to use one file. Yeah, you can also so one theme it. file. One theme file. Oh, that's yeah. A good question. Okay, that's a difficult one, of course. But uh, you can also uh, yeah step over to uh, build some integration with Mono Repo, so you uh, you're quite sure. That you, uh, yeah, you have a lot of consistency uh, in your styling and your uh, buttons and your colors and etc. Uh, with theming, yes, this is a good one. We, uh, I also use it with Angular, and that can be a problem, of course. Yeah, yeah, that's a good, a good advice. I cannot, uh, I cannot give you uh, the best, the best advice. I cannot give you, of course, but every project is different from each other. The, can I ask you? I mean, you spoke a bit about um, uh, having a component library. Yeah. Could you not um, have that theming inside the component library? Yeah, yeah, that can also do. You can also uh, choose for that uh, for one uh, UI component library. Of course, you can do that. Uh, but you have done the yeah, you have uh, had pros and cons. Eh? I've told you already. So uh, yeah, one you component library, but then the, yeah, then all the all the front ends are then coupled to that uh, UI component library. But it's, that should not be a very big problem always. What was your struggle well, when you switched from uh, like a typical monolithic uh, project to micro front ends? What did you struggle when you start learning about someone? Yeah, what yeah. is your advice to someone that who is, will go and have to face the same struggle? Yeah, this, this is a struggle. Uh, it's always a struggle uh, because uh, you have also a lot of downsides with the uh, micro front. It's, just, it's not the holy grail, eh? it's not a silver bullet. And, uh, and also, uh, Monolith has also advantages. Uh, everybody knows. So uh, uh, everything is uh, tightly coupled and you don't have to configure m much and you can bear easier tests because you have everything in one place. And with micro front ends, everything is splitted up. And you have, uh, yeah, you have difficulty. Uh, yeah, okay, I, I talk now about the downside, but it's sometimes difficult for me also to uh, to manage micro front ends, of course, because you have, uh, yeah, you have such, such such a lot of moving parts. But on the, by the other hand, it is uh, you, you have a lot of freedom of uh, uh, what you uh, how you make things, and the customer uh, sees, uh, yeah, see more results. At, at uh, yeah, uh, more result, faster results, faster they see the results of your work, and that's with with uh, monolith. It in, is uh, is not the case normally. Then it is water. Or, uh, sorry, in the beginning, when you develop the micro front ends, is it a, do you have a slower pace and then yeah, in the beginning it is slower pace and then, and then later on it is uh, going faster and faster. Yeah, okay. you, you can build. Yeah, you have a lot of. Uh, that is right. If uh, I think uh, I, my my experience was that I have uh, one year 
Yeah, it was quite slow, and then we speed up uh, extremely because we have you have to set up a lot of things, of course. But uh, finally, you're uh, you're winning, of course, uh, the game with micro frontends. Um, can you give us an example? And, and microservices, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, can you give us an example where you you had a monolith and um, you used a micro frontend and how how that project um, got better from from doing the switch? Uh, does it be better to go in the switch? Uh, yeah, first we had, uh, yeah, for example, uh, for the Rahaba Bank, we have one huge uh, application, uh, tightly coupled front and back end together. And then we have uh, yeah, a lot of effort it cost eh, to split it up in uh, micro front ends and micro services. That's, uh, you have to, yeah, rethink everything about it. Eh? This is, of course, we have to, have to start mm -hmm. from the beginning. That, that, that's the problem, eh? Let's start, start from a zero. Mm -hmm. And then, but okay, finally, I uh, they were so glad because you can, uh, yeah, you can uh, deploy and develop independently of other of other teams, and uh, yeah, we we have uh, beautiful results uh, at the end uh, about styling, of course, uh, everything. Uh, yeah, we used uh, the Mono repo there, so the styling was not really a, a problem. So we had a lot of consistency, and. Uh, it is also yeah. It's, it's running. It's also running in the cloud. We choose uh, also for that, so you can choose uh, what you want. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and with the with the monolithic, that is uh, not the case. Eh? Does a does a size of a team plays a role in a in a micro front end? So, would you advise like if it's like a team of three people, let's say, would the micro front end work? Because no. So what is the size of a team that a micro front end will work? It's the same like Agile, I think, isn't it? It is Agile, of course, and it is uh, yeah, right. And a lot of yeah, you need of uh, yeah, you need a lot of front enders and back enders, and also uh, testers and uh, architects. So you uh, normally you have more than six people or say seven people per team. Mm -hmm. As my experience, seven people, seven uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, that is uh, that's the size. And when you uh, yeah, when you uh, build an application for when you need two or three teams with of that size, it is yeah. It, I don't don't think it is uh, yeah. You don't have to step over, yeah. But 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 uh, yeah. Okay, there is there is a uh, break, breaking point from when should I uh, start with it? Because there is also a, a lot of you feel organized so much. Mm -hmm. You're working on your own with one team on one project. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can still uh, build, uh, yeah, build it. Uh, not a monolith, but you can build a microservice, of course. But you don't have to start with uh, micro frontends, for example. You can also go further with uh, fronted monolith. Then, is what I mean. Yeah. Um, I, Abdul also shared uh, his experience. I don't know if you want to have a comment on it. We're working on a micro front end and we feel it's a headache spinning up a multiple micro front ends at the, the same time on our machine. Max memory starts running out. What is your comment on this? Sorry, is this a, was your question? So, so it says, he says, uh, we are working on a micro front end yeah. and we feel it's a headache spinning yeah. up. M multiple micro front ends yeah, yeah, at the yeah, same yeah. time to our machines. And his mark is apparently leaking out of memory. Leaking out of memory? Okay, unbelievable. Have you had any experience like this? Yeah, so sometimes we have such a problems with. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, you have to, uh, yeah, we, we choose for a lot of uh, resources. So, uh, we don't have to, uh, finally we did we didn't, didn't have that problem anymore because yeah I was talking I was talking about an example at Rabobank and uh, and the, the banks uh, yeah, the Rabobank has a lot of money so they we we can mitigate mitigate uh, it's not a really problem for our friends for us Great. yeah so thank you very much again um, uh, it, it was great to have you back. And uh, yeah, we will see you back again in another event. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah.
in person Thank at least. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, also.